So this here is kinematics, really. It's dealing with position, velocity, right? But um, it is new in this course in that it's calculus-based. The, the key word to tip you off is this instantaneous velocity. When we deal with instantaneous velocity, the definition of that would be a little change in x over a little change in time, right? In such a way that delta t or dt is so small that it's basically as close to nothing as possible, right? The, the essential idea behind calculus. And this is what makes this course a calculus-based physics course. Although so far, I don't expect you to fully know all your various differentiation derivative rules. As long as you know the sum rule and the power rule, that's all I need you to know. And we'll demonstrate that through this question as well. So typically with these questions that involves calculus, we're usually given the time function of the position like that. And most often times there's some complicated looking thing in the middle. So instead of making sure every single term here has the correct unit, we just usually tack the units on at the very end like that. So we'll keep up the trend and not sub in units very specifically and just make sure that in the end the unit is correct. We are of course here assuming that time is measured in seconds. And so let's start. So given the x as a function of time to find the instantaneous velocity at any given time, what we have to do, we have to actually first take the derivative without subbing in the time first. Because once we sub in the time, everything becomes fixed and constant. You can no longer take the derivative of that thing. So we find v as a function of time first which is dx dt. And knowing the sum rule, you know that you can derive term by term. And then knowing the power rule, we can do these pretty simple derivatives. Constant stays the same. With the t just like by itself, there's an invisible one there. So power rule says the power comes down and the power gets subtracted by one. Same thing with the second term, two constant, two power comes down, t two minus one. Now the units is not just meters, right? Because what we've done is we've essentially taken that x and divided by dt, which is measured in seconds. So the units in yen will work out to be meters per second. Simplifying a little bit, t, that becomes t to zero, t to zero is just one. So 10 times one is nothing. So you can also maybe remember I wrote that if you just have a t, it just goes away. And then two times two is four, then t to the one power. So that would be our velocity function. Once we have that velocity function, v of t, then we can sub in the various specific times that were asked for and get those numbers. And we're not going to sub in the second here because we know that the units will work out to meters per second. So that's 10 minus 8, 2 meters per second at t equals 2 seconds. And then they also ask us at three seconds. So that's 10 minus four times three, giving us negative two meters per second. And it's perfectly all right for velocity to be negative, right? Because that just means it's in the opposite direction to whatever we define to be positive. So that's the instantaneous velocity. In part B, we're dealing with this keyword speed, right? So the idea between speed versus velocity, even though in everyday conversation, we tend to use those pretty interchangeably. In physics, we deal with it so much, we have grown to be a little more precise, I suppose, with these wording. Very specifically, when we talk about speed, we're talking about the magnitude of the velocity. So sometimes we denote speed as v with an absolute value sign to refer to the fact that it's the magnitude we're talking about. In 1D, it's very trivial because it is actually just behaving like an absolute value sign, right? We're really ignoring the direction, which is expressed using positive and negative sign. So two meters per second, absolute value is two meters per second. At three seconds, we worked out from part A, that was negative two meters per second. So if you take the absolute value of that, it also is two meters per second. 
So speed just refers to the magnitude, and so we basically drop the sign. And part C, they talk about a different word now, which is average velocity. So it's still velocity, so it's it could have positive or negative sign, but the average velocity, unlike instantaneous velocity, refers to what happens between two times. So you're comparing two different position at two different times. You have delta x over delta t. So we're not deriving here. Whenever we deal with average velocity, we're taking the difference. So x at three seconds minus x as two seconds divided by three seconds minus two seconds. And very critically, we're not dividing by three seconds or two seconds, right? We're dividing by that delta, the change, the sub, the difference. It gets a little lengthy, so I'm going to first figure out what the position at three second and at two second is first, so that that knowing all the units work out to meters, thirty minus eighteen equals twelve meters. Likewise with the two second case, it also gives us twelve meters. So it's a little funny when you work out the average velocity. We get zero meters over one second, which is zero meters per second. Despite the fact that earlier we saw that the instantaneous velocity wasn't zero in both those cases, right? What this is sort of doing is saying that somehow we pick two specific points in time where you went somewhere and then came right back to the exact same spot, so that overall you didn't move anywhere, but at any given moment during that motion you were moving. Most likely and usually we are more Uh, interested in the instantaneous velocity, so learn that calculus stuff.